explaining the cannonball for the first time, I've had to do it a bunch of times. And, uh, you know, you, I ride the motorcycle around now that the thing's over and people see it, and you try to say to somebody, oh, they say, oh, that's really cool, you know, how far are you riding? And you say, oh, you know, I just come back from riding coast to coast. Um, well, the cannonball we just did is kind of like a, a rerun of long distance races that were run in the early part of the country. The most famous guy was Cannonball Baker, who uh, went across the country back in the teens on Indian motorcycles at a record pace. He was able to cross states where there were no roads, basically dirt roads, Indian paths. Uh, the highway system wasn't in place back then. And he had made quite a name for himself as the guy who was able to cross country in record time. Basically you say, you know, it's pre-16 motorcycles. We're gonna ride pre-16 motorcycles from one side of the country to the other. In, you know, a, a short period of time, and I don't think the general population gets it. I don't think that most people can, you say pre-16 motorcycles, I don't think nine out of 10 people have seen a pre-16 motorcycle. Bud Eakins was a, a stuntman for Steve McQueen. Bud always wanted to do a really early bike run cross country. So Bud Eakins died, I guess it was two years ago, this, this coming spring. And uh, uh, in, in memory of Bud, Bonnie decided to the cannonball together. And that was a pretty cool thing to do. Kind of like to pay homage to what he was able to accomplish. So the Cannonballs pretty much was formed uh, by Lonnie Ison Jr. And his idea was uh, just let's see if I can get anybody to go cross country on their old bikes. From what he told me, he threw his website up announcing the Cannonball and then went on vacation fishing in Mexico. And by the time he got down to Mexico, his phone was filled with messages. The website crashed and he had all this response and realized I got something here. To see a 1911, 1910 Harley or Indian, it, it's they're just not commonplace. So I tell people, you know, it's a pre-16 motorcycle run. We went coast to coast, and I don't know unless unless I've got the motorcycles sort of there, and unless they're paying real close attention, if they'll have any idea of of what we were riding, you know. The interest that I had in doing it was to have an early motorcycle, which I restore and know intimately, to put these things together, and to run it across country, that was pretty odd, to have an opportunity to do that. I think that was, just to just have that opportunity was, was really what I wanted to, to do. I think the people that saw us on the road mm -hmm. um, might have got a better feel for what we were doing, and, and when you can see the bikes in motion, you get a better idea. I think people have a hard time understanding how much you have to do to keep these stupid things running. You know, it's a constant, you know, you readjust the carburetor while you're riding down the road and the more modified the engine is, you know, I, I bumped compression and I did things on my motor to try to give it a little more performance. It made it so much more sensitive to temperature change and altitude change that I was constantly sort of tinkering with it as I was rolling down the road to try to find the sweet spot you could sort of adjust yourself out of whack and uh, lose a lot of time. You know what I mean? You had to sort of make small, small adjustments while you moved. And that was the hardest thing I think about the Cannonball was getting over the fact that everything moved forward at 40 miles an hour all day long. And if you 
stopped, you had to catch up with that. So this nut pushes down on the uh, valve pocket cage or the valve cage inside this pocket and pushes, seats the valve down into the head and at the same time pushes up and locks this because you saw I just drop it in and quarter turn it, locks this from rotating. So that little bugger is kind of critical. Um, and this is, although it's plated, it's just uh, bronze. So it's not very hard. It'd be very easy to tear. And I've seen a bunch of them with the tabs torn off the bottom of them. So you see, I don't really use a torque wrench on most of this stuff. It's more sort of by feel than by anything else. It's just too much of a chance of wrecking stuff if you went by some number you pulled out of some old paperwork or some lie somebody told you. Down to Kitty Hawk, the monument. Had an amazing crowd out there. People were supporting us. It was very exciting. Do you want, uh, do you want to be down there by me since that's your start position? I, I guess so. Okay. He said just well. He just said park wherever you want and they'll You're rearrange us. Out, so that's the way they're gonna haul us out. So. Yeah. losing power. I couldn't figure out what the story was. Instead of doing, you know, 3540, I was doing 2530. I was like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? And that flapper valve, just from the punishment of, you know, the, the bikes running at such a high RPM for so long, was just tearing them up. The, the flapper valve on the carburetor is a valve that regulates the intake pulse through the, through the intake manifold, and they kept going bad. So my flapper valve ended up, was, was bad. And I ended up replacing it, got back on the road, and everything was really, was, was fine after that for a while. John had engine trouble. I found right away that the bottom end of this bike, the rod, was not gonna be strong enough to, to do what I wanted to do with. I was really hammering this bike wide open all day long, full throttle. I tried to think the whole time that I was preparing for this, what I would need to repair this bike on the road. I had a lot of in-play issues. Uh, I had everything I needed to fix the bike. I had an extra motor with me for parts and pieces. Thank God I brought it, you know.